Okay, here we're going to look at ecological organization. And you can see that starting at the very basic or the level of the organism, you can build up to a population that could lead to a community, an ecosystem, a landscape, and a global view here. So this is just kind of that general ecological organization here. And we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail now. So first off, well, what is ecology? Well, evolution and ecology are two key concepts. Keep in mind that evolution are changes that occur in an organism's traits over time, over an extended period of time. Ecology is how the organism lives in their particular environment. So again, keep in mind the separation of these two. To break apart ecology, because that's the focus of this video lecture, is that ecology, eco stands for house. So house and uh, the ology is the study of. So think of the study of an organism's house. The greatest diversity of life on Earth is a result of evolution, and evolution can be said as a consequence of ecology over time, so they do have an impact and influence on one another. As a result, ecology is the study of how organisms interact with their environment. As an example, we see the bee interacting with the flower here. Now, adaptions to climate, many organisms have adapted to survive in their specific climate. See here with a camouflage, also the changing of fur coats of color of the rabbits here. White during the winter months to blend in with the background and brown here to represent a little bit more of the forested kind of soil leaf looking uh, material here. Six levels of ecological organization. This is kind of just a general summary slide. A good one to come back to to be able to refer to uh, and see if you hit all the major points because all of these are covered in this particular video lecture. Populations, species, communities, ecosystems, biomes, and the biosphere will all be touched on here in a moment. So starting with first, populations. Well, what's a population? Populations are individuals of the same species living together. Uh, the demographics are the statistical study of populations, which allow predictions to be made about how a population will change. So we're looking at past data, past influences. We can make a prediction. doesn't necessarily mean that's how it's going to turn out, but a prediction on how that population may change over time and sometimes it's uh can go up and down in kind of a predicted pattern here here we're looking at median household income just as an example of how things can fluctuate and change but we're tying this in to populations of species living together so what's a species if there's a species living together well how do we define a species well species are all populations of a particular kind of organism from a species. So what's this kind of mean? Well, this assumes there's common characteristics within a similar species, uh, genetically compatible, interbreed under natural conditions, and sexual reproduction can occur. Cannot be with exclusive asexual. So we don't call this with asexual organisms, how they uh, replicate or multiply. This is reproduction in the absence of mate or of fusion of organisms. So prokaryotes, amoeba, and some animals, plants, uh, can reproduce with asexual means. Can that exactly fits the definition for a species? Here we're looking at uh, different bird species here, and these all have common characteristics. They're genetically compatible. They can interbreed under natural conditions and reproduce by the way of sexual reproduction. So this species, species is Latin for kind or appearance. And Linnaeus describes species in terms of their morphology. Keeping on morphology is like the shape or how they visually look. Modern taxonomists also consider genetic makeup as a function in behavioral differences when describing the species. So we can be a little bit more precise now. I'll look at the DNA, see uh, some commonalities that may exist. And that's how we can kind of classify or define species. Communities are populations of different species living together. So this is the most system to define with precision, a community. Because uh, community is a macro system, so it's a large system. It's held together by feeling and sentiment uh, at the interface between society and microsystems. So we say the community could be, for example, the school community. It could be the town community. It could be the state community. It could be the region community. So that's why it's difficult to define with a great deal of precision. Community the consistent part is populations of different species living together. So in a community, the populations are identify with one another. They may occupy common territory, engage in common activities. 
and have some form of organization that provides differentiation of functions which allows the community to adapt to its environment, thereby meeting its needs of its components. So the meerkats can have a lookout. Uh, we see a local community here uh, engaging in activities, uh, this interaction between different uh, species here. Now, within these communities, components include the persons, groups, or families and organizations within its population and the institutions it forms to meet its needs. So we see here where we see people coming together, community coming together to build up pikes here. We see community coming together here to distribute food or water during a time of crisis. Uh, these are, again, are each communities, but they are defined slightly differently. Now, ecosystems, looking a little bit larger here, this is a combination of communities and associated non-living factors. So an ecosystem is a natural unit consisting of all plants, animals, and microorganisms, also including uh, the biotic factors, in an area functioning together with their non-living physical or abiotic factors in the environment. So this is defining an ecosystem. Here we have a highway that's passing through, and we have an animal crossing passage here to eliminate the need for them to kind of go through the road system. So this is again, kind of a small version, kind of an ecosystem because we're taking into account biotic factors, the animals, and abiotic factors, uh, which can be just a physical outline of the land there. In addition, we have something called biomes. Biomes are major terrestrial uh, areas of organisms that occur over wide geographic areas. So biomes are very large scale based. Location of each bioma, biome is primarily defined by the temperature and precipitation an area may receive. Biomes can also be defined by winds, rapid temperature changes, fires, floods, etc. This gives you just a little bit of an idea of classification of some biomes here. And they're listed here, but the key part here is that it's major terrestrial areas uh, located within the geographic range of the world. And how do you kind of link all this together is the biosphere. So this is the largest scale that we're going to look at. All, this includes all the biomes together with marine and freshwater areas. So the Earth has four major connected systems, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the atmosphere, and the ecosphere, all together creating the biosphere, which is the portion of the Earth that's inhabited by life. It includes all the biotic and also non-living components or abiotic parts here. So this kind of ties everything together, looking at the very large scale. We'll go back to our first slide, we see that's the global view. And we worked our way all the way down from kind of that organism level to population, defining communities that are interacting to form uh, ecosystems and the landscape, forming our entire ecological organization.